I'd like to call to order the July 2023 City of Canal Winchester Planning and Zoning Commission meeting. Time in is 7 o'clock. Mr. Deeds, please call the roll. Um, Mr. Ritchie. Mr. Waldenthaler. Here. Mr. Donahue. Here. Ms. I Ms. Gooden. Here. <laughs> All right. Uh, Mr. Deeds here. Mr. Palsgrove. Here. All right. Motion to excuse Mr. Ritchie and Ms. McDonald. Second. Roll call. Mr. Woodenthaler? Yes. Mr. Donahue? Yes. Ms. Gooden? Yes. Mr. Deeds? Yes. And Mr. Palsgrove? Yes. Now I will need approval for the minutes from our June 12th, 2023 meeting. So moved. Second. Motion made by Mr. Palsgrove, second by Ms. Gooden. Roll call. Mr. Woodenthaler? Yes. Mr. Donahue? Yes. Ms. Gooden? Yes. Mr. Deeds? Yes. Mr. Palsgrove? Yes. Uh, now is the time for public comments. So these are for items that are not on our agenda this evening. So if there's anybody that likes to speak. Okay, now if you will be speaking to the commission tonight, I would ask that you take an oath. So if you're able, can you please stand? If there's any chance you'll speak to us, all right? Do you swear to be truthful in the testimony you give? Tell the truth and nothing but the truth. If so, please say I do. Thank you. And I will turn it over to staff. For our first application the first application tonight's agenda is tabled application va 23-007 uh, the address of subject property is 21 east fairfield street uh, again this applicant is requesting relief from the rear yard setback uh, for an accessory building dictated by 1195.04 a uh, again for a quick refresh this property is zoned a low density single family uh, it consists of 0 0.19 acres on the south side of East Fairfield Street. Uh, the applicant has a existing uh, 1,044 square foot home with an approximate 96 square foot detached garage at the rear of the lot. Uh, you can see it on the um, aerial uh, on the screen. Uh, the um, applicant is requesting approval to replace the existing shed with a new uh, accessory building approximately 21 by 24 uh, feet uh, 504 total square feet uh, the existing building uh, the, excuse me the proposed building has been modified from last uh, month's meeting uh, the applicant has provided me with updated drawings for the building uh, that you guys should have copies of uh, the building shows a similar style to what was proposed last month uh, the main change is the garage door height has been reduced to be an 8x8 door. Um, when looking at the um, information submitted in the variance application, uh, the applicant is requesting to put the building five feet away from the rear property line um, as indicated on the attached plot plan. Um, the applicant has provided some photographs showing what that building would look like uh, if it was to be in a location like what the Planning and Zoning Commission uh, proposed during last month's meeting, uh, pushing it closer to the house and the garage. Um, staff believes it's still the intent of the applicant to keep it in the uh, original location shown um, and not the uh, updated photographs that are uh, being presented to you guys this evening. Um, the applicant has also um, presented information showing what that um, building looks like. Uh, again, pretty similar to what was shown last month. The biggest difference, again, the, the height is now eight feet. And I believe this vertical band at the bottom and the updated uh, rendering has been removed. Um, when looking at the um, information also provided by the applicant, uh, they took a photo of a small 8x10 approximate uh, shed that is in the Winchester Village subdivision uh, showing that the that building is also a metal uh, sided metal roof structure um, when and just for the Commission's reference when a accessory building is under 200 square feet we don't require any building permits or plans for its construction uh, we just do a setback um, check so a plot plan note looking at where the building's going um, in this instance the building the applicant reference we do have a permit for the zoning check for setbacks um, but with the size of that building there is no information when they 
requested to put it there, what it looked like. Um, so staff was unaware that there was another metal building in the area. Um, however, the materials being used um, look pretty similar to what the applicant is requesting this evening. Um, if there's any questions for staff, I'd be glad to help answer. Uh, the applicant's here to answer any questions you guys have. <clears throat> questions for staff. Mr. Moore, is the original application, was it 24 by 21 by 12? Correct. Just the, so, so the footprint of the building is the same except for, and the, really the big difference is the garage doors are, went from 10 to 8 feet. I believe so, yes. Is it fair to say that's the only modification from the original application? To my knowledge, yes. Okay, thank you. Any other questions for staff? Is the applicant present? Yep. Anything you wish to add? Or? Uh, no, I don't. Um, just that it, um, we, we talk about setbacks, and as you can see, there was, um, I guess, drawn out back in the 50s that nothing really has a setback per se. So, um, and it, it's, it was my understanding that you have, uh, the setback was changed in 2002, I think, to accommodate larger lots. Uh, I don't think that really ap ap can apply, I guess, to my situation. I, I can't, you know, there's nowhere to go, I guess. I understand that you would have a 10 foot and an eight foot uh, with larger lots, but obviously a lot's not very big to begin with, so. Um, but um, the setback part, I guess it's just, there's not really a, you know, everything was kind of pushed right up against the property line way back in the day, so I'm just asking more or less for a three foot setback, not, I'm not even pushing it to the property line like a lot of other buildings and uh, structures. And, and excuse me, one so the setback from the, there was an electrical easement that we spoke about last month. So the rear yard setback for this uh, current zoning district is eight feet. Um, there is an electric easement for South Central Power that is five feet um, behind the lot. Thank or, you. On, on the rear of the lot. Okay. Uh, any other comments, Mr. Any questions for the applicant? I, I think part of the discussion last time is to make it look a little bit more uh, area appropriate. Right. I don't, I don't understand that question, I guess, because you have, if you walk around, there's, there's brick garages with vinyl roofs. There's T111 sheds. Uh, there's vinyl, complete vinyl buildings. So there's really not a consistent thing to go from. If you are at least where I walk around, um, down the street from me, you can go down four houses and you have uh, brick with, like I said, wooden or a vinyl uh, roofs, you have just all wood and all vinyl, you have T111 garages, and, and you know, like, there's, there's really not any consistency, I guess. Right. The only thing that's not, I guess, is a metal building. So, except for on the other part of the, across the street from where I'm at. That's the only one I could find that was metal. But right. there's a lot of um, older, I don't, I don't even know if that building was metal, to be honest with you. I passed one that was, I couldn't even tell if it was metal or not, because it had been painted so many times, so. I think what we're looking for is, you know, as things evolve over time, the zoning code has changed, which is why we have the setbacks, which is <clears throat> making it look a little bit better than just the, you know, the shed that I think is. Right. If you look at the three sheds that are on my, around me, right. they're all rotted T111. Yep. Uh, I'd rather have a metal building that's not going to rot in five years than rotten T111 in, in five years. Right. So that's why I went with the metal. Is the shed that's currently there going to remain? No. So that'll be removed. Right. And can you explain to the commission uh, these drawings that appear to have what I would assume is the outline of the footprint of the future building? That those are drawings where I believe Andrew recommended. He basically moved the garage from Cheryl Jones's and moved it over where it would be at the end of my garage. And the whole reason was to have it so I don't sit on my porch and look out at the back of my garage. So that's basically where I'd be sitting on my porch, on my swing, and I'd be looking at 10 feet from there, I'd be looking at the back of my garage. So when you say the back of your garage? Oh, the, the front of the garage, I guess I so, should so say. So the doors yes. will be accessible from your driveway? 
from the rear of the house that will face, you, those they pictures, will face the north, I those, guess. Those pictures you're looking at, if, let me, if, if I correct, mm -hmm. that's where the, they, he suggested that I would try to put the garage. Okay. And I was just trying to show if I put it there, I would be sitting on my porch and looking at the front of my garage. So to confirm, the front of the garage will not face the rear of the property? No. Okay. And the, the, the current small shed that's there will be removed? Yes. So do you intend to be able to drive a vehicle? I'm not, I'm not parking any cars in it. It's for a Jeep that has no top, that I only drive in the, in the summer and not raining. Uh, lawn mowers, pressure washer, spreader, that kind of stuff. Ladders, that's all that's going to be in it. But I'm not parking in it. I'm putting a car in it on the days that it's raining and snowing and cold. Okay, that uh, may be a fine definition of the word parking, but... Um, I'm storing how, it. How are you getting the Jeep to the garage? Through the grass. Okay. So, I mean, you, you park in it. I, I guess I would store a car in it, not park a car in it. Some parking to me would be, I put it there every night and it's, I don't drive it every day. I don't drive it maybe 15 times a year. And in your main objection to putting it at the end of the existing driveway is that you don't want to have to look at it from the porch. I just want as much green space and tree space. The only reason that I, have, I want to move it back three feet is so I won't have to cut a tree down. And yeah, maintain the landscape. I've got it doesn't, there's a tree right behind, there's pictures show that one tree, right? There's a tree there. There's um, a flower bed that's got another bush and a bunch of flower beds, actually roses that my grandmother planted in that uh, flower bed. I don't know if it, my mom, I bought the house from my mom. My mom bought it from my grandfather and uh, my bought, grandfather bought it in 53, mom bought it in 2003 and I bought it from her. And the reason she left is because the washer and dryer were in the basement and there was no garage. But she's in a assisted living place. So. Any other questions for Mr. Hurt or comments? Got any idea of the distance from this tree you're trying to save to the front of the garage? If I do it at eight feet, it's literally a foot away. The front of the garage would be a foot away from the tree. The only thing I'm getting, like, if I put it, if I get the three feet back. If it's on five feet from the, the property line, I get three feet from the tree to the garage instead of a foot, which you get into tree roots and, and all that kind of stuff. I just want a little more, more room around to get around a tree than a, a foot. Which is the original request for the variance. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So I'm Any sorry. other questions? Yeah, I'm sorry. Just one more clarification. So the doors of the garage are going to face Fairfield Street or going to face the alley? Fairfield Street. Okay. There's no alley. It's actually the, it's the, the driveway for the waterworks. Yeah. No, the garages will face Fairfield Street. Thank you. And so, Mr. Moore, just to, just for my own personal clarification, the, the variance, where, where, how much are we talking about in feet? That'd be uh, three foot <coughs> relief. Yeah, okay. That's what I thought. So, three feet, the approval of this variance would preserve the trees and some of the green space on the property, as well as vegetation on the property and would allow the resident or the applicant to uh, maintain the green space and, and the views that he have. Those are the notes that I have. If the building were, if we pass the variance and the building is put where he would like to put it. Yeah, I think the only other comment, going back to the make it look like it more like it fits the area, the gentleman that came in for the rather large barn on Gender Road, um, we had him change that look and feel to be more than a shed. So, yeah. And I know we didn't give you specifics on it, but I was thinking something that looked, you know, a little bit better than a shed, more of a, a detached garage, is kind of what we were trying to get out of that. 
doesn't look like a shed to me. But it looks like a garage. No. If you're going to just speak in the microphone, if you're going to speak. Yeah, sorry, I should have asked if I stopped her, but I just. Um, I, I, it doesn't look like it. My shed looks like a shed. That to me looks like a, a you know. It looks like a pool bar. How about right, that? Yeah, 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 yeah. Exactly. So it looks like a pool exactly. bar. Yeah, exactly. Was. Exactly. And, and so the color will be a grayish color and white garage doors? Yes. It'll actually be like, it'll be have the black on the bottom and the gray. It'll okay. be the two tone. I like that. So. Any other comments or questions for the applicant? Andrew, you, you mentioned in your staff recommendation from the prior month that additionally the building design the applicant has shown would require additional variances. Would that, is that still true? So that section of the code um, in this instance would be up to the Planning and Zoning Commission's interpretation of that section from staff's interpretation, um, yes. But the applicant is here basically appealing that determination okay. that it's not appropriate. Um, and that's really part of the discussion this evening as well. And that's what he's asking for basically showing that he believes it is appropriate. And again, this is less than the square footage, 200 square feet is the requirement where we would require a building permit. So this building's over 200 square feet. This one's 500. And, and so, so when would we require the, the actual permit? So over 200 square feet, the Ohio Building Code requires um, inspections on the building, um, even for a prefab structure that they deliver on a trailer. Um, to make sure it's anchored correctly to the ground. Um, that's when we actually start to see elevations of buildings from the development side. Um, anything under 200 square feet, we just do a zoning check to make sure it meets setbacks. And that's where a building could have a huge variety. It could be a plastic Rubbermaid container from Home Depot. It could be an all-metal building. It could be and what's the square a greenhouse. Building? It could be almost anything. Uh, this one's 504. So that does apply in this scenario? During this scenario, we would do inspections on it. Um, in this case, if this is a kit, we would get a copy of the instructions for the kit. Um, our inspector would basically make sure that the kit is sealed um, by design professional. If it has trusses built into it, uh, if it's something that's dropped off by a semi or a box trailer, um, we would make sure that the building's anchored to the ground per the manufacturer's install instructions, uh, either doing footers and, and um, bolting it down to the footer or pouring a slab and attaching it to the slab with certain bracketry. Um, but that's when we would go into the rest of these items for um, what the building looks like, what the garage door height is, because typically anything lower than 200 square feet doesn't have a garage door. Um, it's a man door or a sliding door and you know, things of that nature. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions for the applicant? Thanks again. <clears throat> uh, we did not open up the public hearing the last time, so I will now, since it's a variance, I will open it up for public comment. If there's anybody from the public that likes to speak, you'll have four minutes to speak. I won't start until you sign in, sir, and begin to speak. Sure. And I'll kindly just let you know at three minutes you have a minute left if you go that long. If you could just state your name and address, and you can speak your. My name is uh, uh, Rick Cox, and I live at 11170 Honey Creek Road, Thornville. Uh, I'm good friends with Rob. Uh, I work for a company also that has a survey company. So uh, we went out and uh, staked the backyard, found out where the properties were to establish where the platted easement for the power line is uh, <clears throat> compared to areas around. I think it's really important to note that that property was platted in 1951. 
It was not, uh, unfortunately, it was very small. Um, and when you drive through there, uh, his view out of the backyard is the waterworks, which is exceptional out on High Street, I believe. But when you're in his backyard, that uh, barn that's right on the property line is uh, kind of an eyesore. I mean, it is not a beautiful area. And if that barn is moved up to where uh, we had discussed it earlier, up closer to the house, it makes the entire part of his backyard an area for it, it would just be back of house have no real purpose uh, for a small lot it has some pretty nice landscaping along with the uh, neighbor on the side Cheryl uh, if that garage goes up it would affect her view that she would just be looking at the side of a garage and I do have one question if it wasn't for the variance would he require uh, materials or anything to be reviewed if he didn't need the variance any building under um, over 200 square feet has the full material package what's being submitted for review so yes but I mean would they be able to tell him he couldn't use if he didn't need the variance would you be able to control what I would I would be the one to inform him that I don't believe it meets the exterior requirements and then he could either appeal that to the Planning and Zoning Commission which is part of what he's doing now or apply for a variance if he agreed that okay. it met that didn't meet the requirements okay so uh thank you very much uh the only thing I, I i would like to say is if you drive through that neighborhood which he has been a family attendee there since the early 50s um the character of that neighborhood is there is no consistent character uh, you could tell from that picture and the picture you showed with the GIS, their setbacks are a later idea for this whole neighborhood. So every building, every driveway, everything is at or on property lines, let alone setbacks. So um, I would uh, requestfully uh, hope that you guys would be in approval. And prior to the vote, just in case, if you could help us understand what the appeal process is, if this doesn't go our way, I'd appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. And just some clarification for the commission, um, both the applicant and the um, member of the public alluded to this property has not always been zoned R3 low density residential. Uh, we have now two residential zoning classifications uh, r1 which is a large lot rural classification r3 which is a subdivision uh, typical classification uh, when this house was built in the 50s there was probably six or seven residential classifications all having various lot widths home sizes that were required setbacks um, this properties either were zoned an R4, R5, R6, you know, one of the ones that had smaller, tighter lots um, back when this subdivision was platted. Um, back in the early 2000s, all of those smaller lot subdivisions had been fully developed and built out. So, like many communities did in the early 2000s, shrunk our zoning categories to make it one multifamily, one or two single family, one commercial to streamline the way zoning worked. Um, so that's what happened here. So um, many of our um, older areas in this neighborhood, um, including Winchester Village, which was an R4 zoning category, were all changed to R3. So all the standards are the same across all of them. So back when these homes were built, the setbacks were different. Um, just in the early 2000s, around 2002, that um, was standardized. Thank you. Do I have any time left on my? Sure. All right, just You've got a minute. Uh, thank you. That was great. Stirred up one other thing is, unfortunately, with being from the 50s, uh, with different requirements, zoning may or may not have existed to the level that you guys have now. Um, <clears throat> the size of the shape of the lot is somewhat of a hardship. Uh, as far as where to put a garage on a lot that never really intended. Um, the garage is a storage garage, and I would like to mention that it does help a lot with the neighborhood in screening the waterworks back of house. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> I don't need a motion.
motion to close the public hearing. Actually, is this isn't a good time to ask Andrew a question, or we do it else afterwards. We can, we can. Let's close the public hearing in the right. Room. So moved. Close. Second. Motion made by Mr. Paul's group, second by Ms. Gooden. Roll call. Mr. Willenthaler? Yes. Mr. Donahue? Yes. M Ms. Gooden? Yes. Mr. Deeds? Yes. Mr. Paul's group? Yes. Discussion or a motion? I guess, real quick, Andrew. So, my understanding is the variance is for the rear setback. Correct. Period. Nothing else, right? Uh, that and the applicant is appealing the exterior design standards. So he hasn't requested a variance for it because he believes the building meets that standard. Um, and since staff is saying that we don't believe it does, then he's essentially rolling in an appeal to you guys as well. In oh, into this. Okay. It's I'm been sorry. it's informal in the discussion, hmm. but that is. Um, I believe the applicant would confirm that's part of his request as well as to, to appeal the exterior design standards that this is being met. So uh, do we need one motion or two motions? You can do one motion um, with this. Um, the appeal process is basically affirming or disaffirming staff's um, interpretation of the code. And I, I should have mentioned this at the beginning of the meeting, but there are five of us present tonight. so four positive votes for the motion to pass and carry. So just so that the applicant's aware of that, uh, we're missing two commissioners this evening. So in order for this variance to pass, there would need to be four positive votes. <clears throat> Do I have a motion? Or any other comments or questions for discussion purposes? I guess I'm still struggling with the uh, the building materials, and I'm I'm sorry about that. I and I, and, I, and, I and it's it's just the you know if we never if we never make a change, we're always going to get what we had. So the T11s will rot at some point in time, be need to be replaced, and that's when we have a chance to weigh in on that. So I see this as an opportunity to improve an upgrade just a slightly. I mean, I'm not, not asking for you know crown molding and a lot of stuff like that, but I just think something that looks like it's a little more than just a pull bar and small pulver in the back of someone's yard. So that, that's just my only thoughts. I may be wrong, <clears> my, my comment would also be, uh, I under, so I understand that Mr. Deeds, and I also understand the layout of some of the, you know, the older neighborhoods around our community and, yep. and the inconsistency of, of uh, accessory buildings and so forth. And then the, you know, the nature of the, the lot and, you know, the difficulty in trying to find something that's affordable and, and both, you know, pleasing to the eye as well. Yep. So, um, I mean, I think overall this is probably a, a small improvement to the property in my personal opinion. Um, and, <clears throat> you know, the, the variance that's before us is, you know, really to make the best use of that property. Uh, so that's my comment. Anybody care to make a motion? Should this is should the motion include both components of it, or just to approve the variance and move on? <clears throat> that would depend on the commission's um, interpretation of that section of the code. If they if the commission feels like it is being met, then the <coughs> discussion and the motion would be on the setback solely. If the exterior um, portion of Chapter 11, 95.04B, uh, the com members of the commission agrees with staff that it is not being met, then you can roll into the condition um, a threshold of what you want to see or indicate what the building would be or or vaguely just say it can't be what's you know as shown it has to be something different I mean that would be I think a further discussion before motions made if that's since I haven't heard much about that uh, this evening I 
I guess, and I'm the only one, I'm sorry for being so vocal, but I, I think we went to a little extra effort with the gentleman on Gender Road. So, you know, the metal, made, metal probably can be made acceptable if it has some additional just details on it, right? We ended up, maybe, maybe this is just not tweakable. Maybe it's not a big deal. Pitch of the roof, I don't know. Maybe it's not worth it. So. so we can put in the motion just a recommendation that the applicant work with staff to ensure that what is presented before us this evening is what gets erected on the property if the variance passes. Fair. Yeah, that's that's basically if you guys approve with no conditions, then it would be whatever submitted this evening. Yeah. So refresh for me then, if we do it that way, what's this building going to look like? Do you have 21 a- 21 by 24. It's going to have eight foot doors. It will be 12 foot at the peak. Correct. That's at the peak, okay. Yep. And it's going to be a grayish color with white doors and I don't think anybody would mention the color of the roof was, but it doesn't matter. Black I, I believe tone. it's a black roof. Black roof and then black around the bottom. All right, so I will attempt to make a motion to approve uh, variance VA-23-007. With the recommendation that applicant work with staff to ensure the described building uh, is what is actually erected. I'll second that. <clears throat> so motion made by Mr. Deeds, second by the chair. Roll call, Mr. Deeds. Mr. Wildenthaler. Under that condition, yes. Mr. Donahue. Yes. Ms. Gooden. Yes. Mr. Deeds, yes. Mr. Palsgrove. Yes. Variance is approved. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, the next application on tonight's agenda, um, the applicants were unable to attend the rescheduled meeting, so they had asked that it be tabled to the August uh, meeting. Um, if I could get a, a motion from the commission <coughs> to table that. For them, that'd be great. So we'll need to table VA 23010. Okay. Motion. Motion. Oh. Okay. Motion to table uh, variance VA 23 010. So moved. Motion made by Mr. Deeds. Was that Mr. Paul's group for the yes. second? Yes. Roll call. First, second. Mr. Wildenthaler? Yes. Mr. Donahue? Yes. Ms. Gooden? Yes. Mr. Deeds? Yes. Mr. Paul's group? Yes. Is, is it inappropriate to ask a question, but it is. The reason for that variance is because they are actually building it on a, a foundation, right? If they were just to put it on four by fours that makes it mobile, would there even be, be, need to be any to come through planning and zoning as a variance? For the last application? The one that just, the no, gazebo. the one we just we tabled. Just, we can talk about that at the end of the meeting. Okay, thank you. Uh, the last application on tonight's agenda is SDP 23-006. Uh, the address of the property is 10229 BC Road. Excuse me, the applicant is requesting a site development plan approval for a new 12,000 square foot accessory building. Uh, this property is zoned limited manufacturing, a home of Donnelly Concrete. Uh, their headquarters on the 8.139 acres on the south side of BC Road. Uh, properties to the north are large lot homes in Violet Township. Uh, properties to the east, west, and south are zoned limited manufacturing and are located in the Canal Point Industry and Commerce Park. Uh, the applicant is requesting approval to construct a new uh, 12,000 square foot detached accessory building on the southeast corner of the parcel. Uh, this building will function as covered storage for fleet vehicles and other products as well as a break room for those employees. Uh, up on the screen is an aerial of the subject property. Uh, Donnelly Concrete took over the former South Central headquarters in 2021. Uh, with this, um, they are looking to do their first 
um, expansion on the site for their fleet storage. Uh, the uh, proposed storage building outlined in red here is located just to the east of the existing uh, detached storage building they have on the site. Uh, this proposed building is a 60 by 200 uh, linear foot building. Uh, this property, um, the, the current building meets the proposed, excuse me, meets the required rear and side yard setbacks, both set at 25 feet. Uh, this um, site, because it's an accessory building, uh, does not require any additional parking or landscaping uh, to be constructed. Those are for only principal structures. Uh, when looking at the uh, site itself, um, going back to this aerial just for reference, uh, the whole storage yard uh, that's fenced in is a combination of asphalt and some really compacted gravels. Uh, so from a stormwater perspective, um, staff isn't super concerned about stormwater runoff being generated from this new building addition. Uh, the applicant is showing here they are adding a new concrete apron just for the turning of those vehicles getting inside of the building, uh, adding two new storm structures that will tie into the rest of their uh, system on the property. Um, when looking at uh, the plans, um, the applicant has noted that they want to um, tap into the sanitary um, sewer on the site to provide a new uh, break room and uh, shower facility in the storage building. Uh, they will be pulling water from the principal building. Um, this site has adequate uh, access to water and sewer to serve uh, the, the addition. Uh, when looking at the building elevations, uh, this building um, <clears throat> is proposed to match the existing uh, with a painted metal siding, um, metal roof. Uh, the applicant is showing architectural details on all four elevations. Uh, there are high bay windows on the sides and the rear of the building. Uh, the front elevation is proposed to have a series of overhead garage doors. Again, this is for the large uh, fleet vehicles, concrete mixing trucks, things of that nature to uh, pull inside of the facility. And again, in the northeast corner here is the locker room, office, restroom, uh, basically a, a break area for, for those drivers. Um, when looking at the um, site plans and the um, zoning code for the uh, Violet Point Overlay District, um, this is a district that is uh, a co-op between Fairfield County and the city of Canal, excuse me, Violet Township and the city of Canal Winchester. Um, to do improvements, um, work with each other on what type of development is going to take place. Uh, those standards um, talk about the requirements for the multi-use trail connector that will go through these sites and eventually connect um, parcels in Violet Township to the east to the Pickerington Metro Ponds to the north uh, through Canal Winchester and the industrial parks uh, providing multimodal ways for people to get to work and enjoy the community. Uh, that plan um, shows that there is an eight foot asphalt path to be constructed along BC Road in the frontage of the site. Uh, this site uh, for South, the former South Central Power Company was the first property sold for the Canal Point Industrial and Commerce Park. Uh, that was sold before the seated development standards were created. Uh, the seed development standards were basically created to spur more development in this industrial park. Um, and then in 2005, uh, the multi-use trail plan was created that's on the screen. Um, because of the multi-use trail plan and that the Violet Point Overlay District indicates any improvement to the principal or accessory buildings on the site <laughs> triggers uh, the overlay standards to be brought up to code. Uh, this site is required to have a eight foot asphalt multi-use trail constructed along the right of way. Uh, so staff is recommending that site development plan SDP 23-006 be approved with the condition that the applicant adds the eight foot multi-use path uh, constructed on BC Road uh, right of way. And then just for reference, again, back to this photo, the first section of this path um, was constructed by the um, Tembe building, that 219,000 square foot industrial building on the corner. Uh, they have brought the path from Daly Road up down Busey Road to this point here. Um, staff is recommending that the 
next section of path be constructed here. Um, and then virtually there's only two more properties left in Canal Winchester until that whole corridor has been filled out. Um, pending you know, any future development on the farm adjacent, either Canal Winchester or Violet Township will require that leg of the path to be constructed, uh, so on and so forth. Again, the design for that is to have the ultimate destination of the Pickerington um, Metro Ponds. <clears throat> Any questions for staff? Was the applicant present? <clears throat> I'll take those duties tonight. Thanks for having me. My name's Craig Stevenson. Um, I'm with Harold and Stevenson. We're civil engineers and surveyors, so we've worked on the site plan for Mr. Donnelly. Um, I think Andrew's done a very good job of hitting all the, the high points there. I don't have anything meaningful to add at this point, but happy to answer questions. Uh, is the applicant okay with staff's recommendation to add the, the eight-foot asphalt path along the right-of-way of PC Roof? Right. So that's been the topic of a lot of discussion. Uh, candidly, not excited about it. Um, it, it very likely, um, just due to the cost, is uh, going to make him not be able to do the project or, or do something smaller for the time being. Um, I, our, our discussion, the strategy has been, we're in this deep, we it, it have nothing to lose in um, finishing out the, the review process and um, get our plans approved ultimately. Then he can get cost estimates and decide whether to go forward with the project or not. But it is, um, he, he feels like our preliminary estimates are that it's pretty burdensome to the project. for the applicant so we're approving a variance to put a second an additional structure that this is a site development plan oh sorry okay yeah <clears throat> thank you mr. Stevens all right thank you <clears throat> no public comments since the site development plan so do I have a motion or any other discussion does the uh, multi-use path have to be asphalt yes okay who has responsibility for maintenance of that or snow removal or anything does, this, does the city do that or is the, the landowner have to do that uh, typically the path is cr treated the same as a sidewalk system in front of uh, a property owner, uh, in front of a property that the property owner has responsibility for the maintenance of it. Um, and same with shoveling, um, snow removal, okay. leaf pickup. So, <clears throat> I'll ask one more question. So, for my own knowledge, this path that goes along BC Road, Mr. Moore from Diley Road would essentially go down to, all the way down to Bowen. Bowen. And then from where at Bowen, or is that the starting point? So it would go from this, that same direction, you'd go to Bowen, and then Violet Township would pick it up going north towards Pickerington. Okay. And then ultimately Pickerington will tie it into their metro ponds. Yeah. Okay. I believe they have a trail system that started up there. I'm not sure where it terminates. <clears throat> Thank you. Mr. Chair, I recommend a site development plan application SDP-23-006 be approved with the staff conditions. Second. Motion made by Mr. Paulsgrove, second by Mr. Wildenthaler. Roll call, please. Mr. Wildenthaler? Yes. Mr. Donahue? Yes. Ms. Gooden? Yes. Mr. Deeds? Yes. Mr. Paulsgrove? Yes. Site development plan has been approved. So you want to repeat your question for me, Mr. Deeds, on the accessory? Um, so if I recall right, 
we had um, someone that came in and wanted to, it was like a, a rel relatively large shed, and there was going to be a variance because of that. But I believe the applicant, if they put that on four by fours, meant it was movable versus something that had a foundation, footer, et cetera, then it didn't need the variance. So I was just thinking along these lines, it's like, well, if they just construct it with. Yeah, so, so any accessory <coughs> structure, uh, our code doesn't define accessory structure if it is permanently anchored to the ground or not. Um, hmm. So if you have typically any shed under 200 square feet isn't anchored to the ground. Um, it sits on pallets, you know, cinder blocks, what have you. Right. Um, you know, that would be still an accessory structure. Um, our code limits the number of accessory structures to single family properties to one. Um, in this instance, that property has a detached garage. Uh, they are asking for a um, shelter house, you know, type feature. Um, this one, um, the preliminary concepts show a brick fireplace on it, a built-in bar. It's a bit it's not movable. <laughs> Sounds like a little more than a gazebo. Yes, got it. All right. Any order new business? Um, I see turbo wash is finally under construction. Turbo wash just went vertical. Yeah, they just started <clears> their, <throat> uh, the front of their building. Um, the Sheets gas station is open. Uh, if anybody hasn't been up there for that, um, someone has already ran into the brick wall on Winchester Pike, uh, so that needs to get repaired. Uh, I was out there today fueling up and I saw that. They hit it four feet off the ground only, so I don't know how that was possible. But um, uh, in terms of other current construction, um, the Tenby building on Dialing uh, Busey Road, they are almost completed with their temporary occupancy. Um, I believe Lucas said that half that building's already leased. Um, so they will be doing work on the inside of uh, those already. Um, the buildings uh, that are, are part of the Robinet Way extension of the old um, farm there, uh, just you can see from 33, there's two industrial buildings. Uh, they are doing showings right now. Uh, Luke said they have a strong leasing activity. Uh, they hope to have those um, with occupancy by the end of next month. Um, they're wrapping those up on the inside, so it's not much you can see from the outside. Um, I believe ODOT is starting their sound wall project along 33. Um, that should, I think, is a six week time frame to get that done. Um, where, where's, where are they starting at? They're starting on the northeast corner of High and 33, and they're going to the Fairfield County line. Yeah. So almost across the street from those two industrial buildings, um, the stone simulated stone wall they put in to screen their loading docks will be very close to the sound wall ODOT's putting in, and design-wise. Um, the one ODOT's putting in will just have like the Canal Winchester stamp logo across it, I believe. Is that just the north side of 33 or both sides? Uh, it's just the one that ODOT's putting in is on the south side of 33, and it's just a small section. They'll do rest of <clears throat> they have the third lane on each side. I believe that's all I have. Thank did, you. Did, uh, <clears throat> did BP decide that's what they were going to do? I have not heard from BP from uh, the last time we um, met. Um, I do know there is another application coming that um, is also seeing what they can do to not do the red brick um, for the plaza. Um, I advise them that it's in their best interest to figure out what they can do to do that or show us that their brick is really close with samples. Um, and I gave them feedback on other projects. You guys have massaged that into their conditions of approval. So, motion to adjourn. Second. <laughs> motion made by Mr. Deed. Second by Mr. Paul's group. Roll call. All right, um, Mr. Woldenthaler. Oh yes. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Donahue. Yes. Ms. Ms. Gooden. Yes. Mr. D. Jess. Mr. Palsgrove. Yes. Timeout. Seven fifty p.m. <laughs>